Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. This chocolate is for the first person who gets the answer right. Can you read this? Can somebody tell me what is the relevance of this figure in today's context? HD. Well, I don't think anyone is getting it. These are the very few limited seconds that we have between us today. And I promise you that I will give you every second's worth and you will enjoy it. Take some lessons home. 52 years ago, I joined the National Defense Academy when I was just 15 years old. Being from a civic school, I quite knew what the National Defense Academy was and what the physical and mental state of training was there. Yet, the reality passed all my imagination. Life was much tougher and there was hardly any time to sleep or rest. One day in the morning, I was woken up by my orderly. I looked at the time and I was furious. It is only 5.20 and I told you to wake me up at 5.23. You have woken me up three minutes earlier and ruined my precious sleep. For me, every second was worth a million dollars. A second between success and failure, a second between defeat and victory, and a second between life and death. Everything in the NDA worked as per clockwork precision, from waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning to lights out at 10 p.m. Everything had to be done at the correct time. There was no question of being late. I had no choice but to settle down in this very organized, regimented, strict environment which I had deliberately chosen, sacrificing my option of being in a college and enjoying cool life like you are doing right now. And sometimes I miss that. At the age of 19, I joined the Indian Army as a commissioned officer. Life continued to teach me very, very important lessons about time. But now, there was an additional responsibility and that was managing, respecting and organizing the time of my troops. Time carried on and taught me very, very important lessons. One important lesson that left a big impact in my life was precision. Have you seen the Republic Day Parade at Delhi? Do you know that it lasts exactly 90 minutes? And in this parade where lots of things are happening and lots of things are fine-tuned and coordinated, the most fascinating part is the fly pass by the Indian Air Force. About 40 aircraft take over, take off from different airfields in the country and fly in at Rajput at the same time. Never has any plane got late. That is precision. In the Air Force parlance, they call it time on target, T-O-T. But why precision, you may ask? Because in war, nothing less is acceptable. If there's no precision, there could be disaster. Not only that you would probably lose a battle or a war, it could also mean the fall of a nation. 
Now, in the army, when an attack is launched, everything is calculated according to something called the H hour. H hour is the specific clock hour when the attackers move towards the objective. When this happens, they are subject to very aimed fire coming from the defender to pin their heads down so that they don't have observation to bring in effective fire. The enemy area, the target, the objective is bombarded, is pounded, is punished with a very heavy concentration of firepower which includes the air power, the artillery guns, the tanks, the mortars and all of that. The enemy is made to go under a shock which is most, more, more, uh, both physical as well as mental. Now as the advancing troops or the attacking troops are reaching closer to the objective, there is now a need for this firepower to stop. Because if that doesn't happen, our own troops may get under our own fire and that can be very, very suicidal. So therefore, there is a complete system to ensure that every part of the fire part, they know when to stop. Because if they don't stop at the right time, there is danger as I told you. If the fire is lifted too early, then it gets give the enemy a chance to recover from the shock that they are in and therefore bring heavy fire on us or aim fire at us and if it is lifted too late then our own troops may get into our fire that is the importance of time every second is equal to a million dollars now when we go on to the ob objective and after the objective is captured, the attacking forces now mop up the objective area. Till now, the planning and meticulous calculations and all were working very well. But that happens only till the first contact with the enemy is made. Then the chaos starts. How we are trained to handle that chaos is a different story. Now when, the, when we reach the objective, there are possibilities of people who have not been killed so far by the bombardment and they could still be surviving. So there is a mopping up operation where these people are now physically eliminated and killed. I remember a story of a dynamic young captain who had taken part in the Kargil war, I met him in the train, train and this is what he had to say. He says, when we were on top of Tiger Hill, into that mopping operation, I was looking around, moving stealthily, looking for any survivors. And suddenly, from nowhere, uh, somebody pounced in front of me and lo and behold, there was a Pakistani Burmese officer standing right in front of me. Both of us are standing just one meter apart and we had our weapons facing each other. A thought came to my mind. Now only one of us can survive. And that one will be the one who presses this trigger first. There was no time to think or deliberate or ask for advice. It was time for action. A split second decision. I took that decision, pressed the trigger, and then he fell on his feet. And he cried, Whoa! And the deadly thought that came to my mind was, What if he had pressed this trigger half a second earlier? Then I would have been crying, and so would have been my mother, like now his mother will cry. Think about it. Lying on the ground, what must he have been saying? How I wish I had pressed the trigger half a second earlier. Isn't that one second worth many, many millions of dollars? 
that is life that is the power of that one second the value of time it's not only in the army it is not only in war it is everywhere if we want to progress as a good nation all of us need to be very conscious about time all of you sitting here i must tell you that your certificates your degrees your qualifications will not be a distinctive factor anymore but people who respect time people who adhere to time respect their own time and others time will have a distinction against others remember that now how many of you here would like to get the best out of your life how many of you want to get the best out of your life i can see almost all hands up very good that's so nice thank you so i am going to give you 5 million dollar ideas on how to get the best out of your life if you want to get the best out of your life you will have to occupy the upper berth in the pentagon of your life let me explain this berth is an acronym and the first thing we come to is b for buying buying and selling time about 40 years ago i don't think i could have imagined anyone buying water water why should i buy water it's a natural abundant resource freely available everywhere why should i buy it but today we very comfortably buy water even at the cost of 20 rupees a bottle there's a shocking prediction for you it is my prediction it may or may not come true but very soon you will be buying and selling time isn't it already happening don't consultants lawyers designers video editors aren't they already sell, selling their time don't they charge you by the hour but what i am saying is it will become a common man's way of communication just imagine if somebody was going to be saying to you very soon hey i want to meet you tomorrow how much do you charge for half an hour everyone will be charging each other and as it is isn't it already happening in a way you don't pay money but when i get a call i attend somebody's call and i don't attend somebody else's call why because this is the value i will get and i feel this is not the value if i don't take up a call of a person who is not giving me value the next is exchange of time like the currency exchange rate i predict there will be time exchange rate like you know between dollars and rupees i may be charging you 400 rupees an hour and you may be charging me 4000 rupees an hour because of the value we assign to the time we spend with you now this could also take shapes like prime time in the morning time i charge so much but at night i charge so much and maybe on weekends i charge so much and god knows there could be happy hours when i don't charge anything the next thing we come to is roti now have you heard of this roti i'm sure you all heard of roi return on investment what is return on investment a financial gain over a financial investment that is roi but i'm going to be telling you of something new and that is roti certainly not this roti that you are seeing here this is return on time invested from today onwards stop saying spend time you don't spend time you invest time when you invest time you start looking for a return when you want to spend time on something you say oh what will i get out of it and if it is unimportant don't do it right now return on time invested can be measured it is subjective 
it can't give you absolute results, but there is a way that you can find out what it is about. So, on a scale of 0 to 4, 0 is when you are bored, there is nothing good about it, I am not happy. 1 is a little better. 2 is a break even, I got what I wanted. 3 is, oh, it was much better than what I expected. And 4 of course is bale bale, it is wow, I really got what I wanted, amazing. So, start using this and I am sure you will find value of time. The next one is time check. I do a lot of goal setting workshops and I learned that why people don't achieve goals is because they make a long list of goals but they don't check whether they have the time for it or not. So next thing when you make goals, just see that you calculate the time required to calculate to achieve a goal and match it against the time you have. If you don't, then please reduce your goals or adjust them. And the last one is hourly work. Does anyone here know his hourly work? Hourly work is how much time do I, how much is my one hour's work if I put it in currency. And if you want to calculate that, there is a simple way. It is your total income of the year divided by the number of hours you work every year. So that will give you your hourly work. Please calculate that. All those who are still not earning, imagine what you will earn and calculate. And then excitement in your life comes when you say, increase your hourly work and simultaneously decrease the number of hours you work every day. Life will be great for you. Now, this I want to tell you is, if you know your assets, you know your wealth, you know your property, but start understanding that time is a very valuable and highly perishable resource, start recognizing it. Once a nurse who had been working in a hospice for a long time said that on the deathbed, I've heard everyone say, I've never heard anyone say I wish I had more money. But everyone said, I wish I had more time. You people are going to do it differently. You are going to say, I lived every second of my life. Thank you.